We're going to follow up an interview I did last week with uh, Jordan, who was here in the Isle of Man. In fact, we're on the same flight going to London, so that's where you are now, back uh, down south. But Jordan, you had your day in court, and I'm also just going to cover ourselves here for the word go. Is that there could be live proceedings, therefore we've got to be careful what we say, but you, we can report on what happened in court, because that's uh, in the public domain now. But do you want to give us an overview, first of all, um, looking back, and if you don't know all the story, do look at our first video. But... Um, I mean, and we've got more to say on this, haven't we, Jordan? I mean, we're going to get some more details. But how did it go here in the Isle of Man? Yes, I was actually uh, very pleased uh, that I was able to speak in the Isle of Man court as an interested party. So uh, the judge, um, I would like to thank. Um, obviously, my family now will have an opportunity to uh, get access to justice. What does that actually mean, though? Because, again, you, you, this is the murder, these are you, your words, of your grandfather. Uh, yeah. And it seems almost like one of these uh, sort of Netflix shows almost. You know, there's so much skullduggery, shall we say, potentially, allegedly in there that uh, things have happened. Attempts on your life, you said to us last time. This is yes. no normal case. No, certainly not, sadly. Um, the, the, the information that I can discuss now, I'm obviously limited to, but I'm convinced uh, that I have found the missing documents from my grandfather's safe that was uh, left open at the, the scene where he was murdered, and it all points to certain offshore islands. So I'm convinced the murder is financially motivated, and I'm obviously in the process of getting some of this information into open court in, in the next few weeks or months. OK, well, I know you've got lots to tell us, and uh, really it's, it's what you want to impart. I mean, starting with this uh, article that uh, you've sent me a copy of, which is quite interesting. Yeah. So do you want to start there? Yes, yeah, certainly. I spoke to the gentleman uh, who's in charge of the murder map site uh, to do with every uh, homicide in London. Uh, and I spoke to him last year, and he didn't know anything of the murder. So where those pictures, which your viewers will see shortly, um, I've actually shared with that individual, and he's kindly now, in June this year, decided to uh, write an article on the murder. Uh, there's lots of information in there that I would like your viewers to be aware of. On the first page, for example, um, my grandfather's murder was shut down just three months uh, after his murder. Uh, it's never been reviewed until, obviously, my involvement. So, again, I would ask the public why, uh, when this individual was a, a wealthy lawyer and uh, an RAF squadron leader, that there wasn't much attention for his murder, and it seemed to shut very quickly. And there was a reward, wasn't there? Yes, indeed. Actually, my family put up the reward um, after the, uh, the police shut the case so quickly in January 1989. So the family decided to offer a reward of £25,000. Um, and really, one of the questions I would pose around that um, topic that I'm bringing up, the, the people in possession or, of my family's finances, why did the reward get taken down? Well, you know, surely a good lawyer would follow these leads for his original client or, or the settler. Um, and so what happens with that reward would be one of my questions. I, I suppose we should put some context in here that you have a Manx connection in your family, right? Yeah, well, my, my grandmother was uh, a Manx resident when she passed away. She's buried in Borough Cemetery, which I visited twice when I've been on the island. And my grand grandparents have been coming to the Isle of Man and other offshore islands for many decades. Uh, and back to this now. Uh, there seems to be potentially, allegedly, whatever you want to say, a link between what happened to your grandfather and two other people. Which uh, how's, Has that connection been actually you know, found to be 100% or is it, is it just a potential Link. Well, I mean, really, again, it would be another question that I would ask your viewers, Paul. Uh, really, if the Daily Mail article of June the 24th, 1991, uh, is writing that information in there, they've clearly got information from the police uh, or whatever sources. They're not just going to put that in the paper willy-nilly, are they? I'm mean, surely they've uh, got some sort of factual information, um, and that's why they put that in the paper. I mean, I can go on to my own research with, with linked murders, but that would be many other videos. But, you know, we could leave it there. I mean, really, I ha it's again another question for the public. What do they think of this? You know, you're certainly making potential references to police and potential, <laughs> I'm using these words carefully, um, a cover up of some description. Is, is that, do, yeah. you, do you stand by that? 
Yes, certainly. I mean, for example, my grandfather was mur uh, murdered and it wasn't listed in the public domain to a certain degree. He was certainly stabbed, uh, which l later on I can discuss or perhaps with you now. If you look at his death certificate, uh, it doesn't mention that he was stabbed. It's got the wrong location for him for his birth and his date of birth is wrong. It's uh, the wrong year. Uh, and it doesn't mention that he's stabbed. And you can see clearly in the articles here, they were looking for two weapons and he was stabbed. Obviously, then I can relate to the fact that the, the inquiry was closed so quickly. And I've managed to now locate missing documents that involve all of the different individuals in the offshore islands from a transaction going behind my grandfather's house at an accountant's. So really, you know, it's there's a lot of questions there. I've got a lot of questions and everything seems to be keep pointing back to one one place or one island. So hence why I'm speaking to your good self, Paul. So I hope you uncover the truth. What's the, what's the likelihood of someone coming forward? Is it, I mean, the reward's no longer there. I mean, you're, you're just hoping that someone will do the right thing then oh, by you. With my family's inheritance that we should be getting, we would quite happily offer the reward uh, and a much more substantial reward. I mean, to do with my grandfather's deeds that I've been reading, I would follow his style. It's 8% per annum. So I would um, offer something in the range of £100,000 for, for the conviction or assisting, arresting these individuals. And you've also said you want to do something for the Isle of Man, I think, in, the, in your... Yes, certainly. Um, I don't want to just come on to your channel and, and talk negatively about the Isle of Man. I'm very fond of it. Um, I've been coming there since the, the 80s. And I believe it or not, I've enjoyed my last two visits, even though it's for... for you know, family matters that are distressing. You know, I've enjoyed the seafood, the lovely landscape and all the lovely people. So what my family would suggest is maybe, you know, doing something for the Isle of Man like a lifeboat and naming it after my, my grandparents, the Durant lifeboat. And let's make this clear, we're talking about a lot of money, are we, here in potential, uh, you know, if you could recoup it. We're, we're not talking about hundreds, we're talking about millions, are we? Many, many, many millions. Right. Uh, so all of the property companies that are involved are, are involved in the huge infrastructure and, and building lots of different projects, um, shopping centres around the world. So, uh, okay. we, anything else you need paid. to get us up to date with on this interview? Because I know you're going to come back and, and, and keep this up to date, but anything else we're missing at the moment? Um, well, I mean, really... It's just where would be the original Crime Watch program for for my grandfather? Oh, yeah, I mean, that, hang on. Yeah, you, I forgot about that. You, you you say it's been used on Crime Watch. Well, the, the BBC keep copies of everything, so you, that must be findable. I'm, I'm guessing, but you, you, at the minute you haven't been able to track that one down. No, I mean, perhaps with your assistance, that would be great if we could see that. It might bring some more information to the table. Um, I mean, the other thing I was going to mention is when I've been in contact contacts with the Metropolitan Police to do with my grandfather's murder when he just got it opened. Uh, a lady there from the Historical Murder Squad actually emailed me, and I've got sent you the email so perhaps we can edit some bits and let your viewers hear. It says um, at the bottom here, um, was, was this an unsolved murder or a solved murder? Surely if she's at the Historical Murder Squad department, she should know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also been other freedom of information requests that I've done in, in relation to other bits of information with the offshore islands. And I've got answers back. We cannot deny or confirm. Um, for example, I was asking, does it link to the Carroll Foundation Trust? Uh, and the Metropolitan Police cannot deny or confirm that. So there's a lot of research and other things that I could you know, be mentioning now. But... Again, I've just wanted to sort of highlight what, you know, that this is still proceeding and that I'm not here to speak negatively about the Isle of Man. I love the place, but I obviously have an issue that we've never got our rightful inheritance. And, uh, I mean, rather than posting everything, you have got a, a, a place that people can see the whole thing, haven't you? Yes, uh, so I've got a YouTube channel that's London's Unlisted Murder and there'll be more um, videos going shortly uh, up in the next few days. Um, yeah, so I mean, thanks very much, Paul, for letting me speak to you. And you know, there's there's much more to this story, but we have to wait until obviously the court to a certain degree. And you you were pleased with what you were able to do in court when over here, because I think beforehand you weren't sure what you could do or say anything, but it went okay on the day, did it? Yes, the Pacific judge was um, perfect in my view. He picked up on the fact that it's been sort of three plus decades uh, to administer a state. Uh, and basically, I've actually managed to administer the estate myself by speaking to the other offshore island. Uh, and those individuals are now acting correctly towards their fiduciary duties. Un unfortunately, like um, unlike um, the individuals that are still here in the Isle of Man. 
And just to finish with, what do you feel in your bones on this one? Do you think there is some light at the end of the tunnel that you will get what you deserve in your inheritance? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's your God-given rights. We've got all the documents. It's all their own letters over the years. I mean, different individuals have been named as beneficiaries and, and now have been proven to be fake. We're the true heirs. Hence why uh, one of the other islands have moved me back to London in, in a very nice house, which I'm appreciative of. But yes, um, certainly it will be a conclusion uh, to this, hopefully by Christmas or very early in January, February. But I'm confident now in the Isle of Man's court and legal service because they're giving me the opportunity to speak in court. And that's really the only thing I've wanted people to do is review my allegations over my last two years worth of work. You know, out of the nine filing cabinets of documents that my family have stored over the years, with every single letter that these individuals have written.